Shall I, uh, it, it is my privilege to invite the panel, Dr. Naveen, who is an Associate Professor in Kimpai, and Dr. Ravi Shankar, who is the Head and uh, Director of Omega Hospital, Vishakhapatnam. Uh, yeah, yeah. Dr. Rupesh, Consultant in HCC Bangalore. Are you there, Rupesh? Yeah, I am here. I am here. Dr. Saurabh, Consultant in Majundar Shah Cancer Center, Bangalore. Yeah, I'm here, sir. Unfortunately, Dr. Shantiling and Dr. Shamchunder uh, are not available due to personal reasons. Uh, is Dr. Sunil here? Yes, sir, I'm there. He is uh, he's from Kidwai. And Dr. Vishweshwar, who is the Chief Radiation Oncologist from Bharat Hospital, Mysore. Are you there, sir? Okay. Uh, let us proceed with the uh, topic of pan topic for panel discussion. This is uh, Advent Radiotherapy versus Salvage Radiotherapy in uh, Prostate Cancer. The case given was a 75-year-old diabetic male uh, who has carcinoma prostate, undergoes uh, prostatectomy, and the uh, pathological stage is PT2N1M0, and he has been referred for radiotherapy three months after surgery. Before going to the discussion of this uh, uh, case, I would uh, do a prologue and ask a few definitions. Dr. Naveen, uh, what do you consider as adjuvant radiotherapy in uh, a post-prostatectomy situation? Dr. Naveen, are you able to hear me? Dr. Ravi Shankar, can you uh, please answer the question? Yeah. Uh, it is uh, adjuvant is something like uh, you initiate the radiation after surgery. If you find that the patient is having any of the high risk uh, factors like extra capsular extension, seminal vesicle involvement. Yeah, yeah, we'll go there. We'll go there, Ravi Shankar. Sorry to cut you. Uh, yes. So, it, uh, do you have any definition of timing of adjuvant radiotherapy here? See, if you look at the trials, some of them, they do it uh, within four months from the time of surgery. Yes. So, uh, I think that should be the cutoff. Okay. Maybe uh, in one trial, I think uh, six months they have taken, Max. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Uh, as you said, uh, rightly, in three to four months, uh, most commonly it is started. But as per the evidence, it is uh, in the radical trial, they used a 26-week cutoff that is before six months. And uh, according to NCCN, up to one year also is considered as adjuvant. And uh, can I ask Dr. Rupesh what you mean by salvage radiation therapy? Yes, yeah, salvage uh, radiation according to radical trial is once the PSA uh, goes beyond 0.1. Uh, I mean, a PSA biochemical uh, failure, uh, mm -hmm. it occurs, then you start radiation that is salvage. Yeah. Uh, can I ask, uh, Saurav, uh, what are the cutoff values for PSA to uh, consider a patient for salvage radiation therapy? So, uh, whenever uh, biochemical recurrence is usually considered whenever there is a rise about 2 nanograms. So, point two. Point point two. Two. yeah, point 0.2 nanograms. So, whenever yeah. it hits that value, you consider it as a biochemical recurrence. And if we offer radiation, at that point, it is considered as salvage radiation. Early salvage. Yeah. Yes. In, uh, there are different definitions for this PSA progression. Uh, radical trials itself, they have mentioned that any PSA level above 0 0.2 or three consecutive rises, even if it is not 0 0.2 also, it is considered as PSA progression on any. Uh, and the other uh, parameter which they didn't consider is uh, persistence of uh, PSA levels after surgery. So uh, this is one of the controversial statements, which I think, which was given uh, by ESMO, but it, it is acceptable. But uh, this is the one which was given in 2019 press release by Chris Parker himself, the, uh, the 
PPI of the radical trial, men with prostate cancer can be spared radiotherapy after surgery. How many of you agree with it? Panel. Dr. Sunil? Yeah, I don't agree with that. Yeah, Dr. Naveen? Dr. Ravi Shankar? Uh, probably today's era uh, with uh, all the new puppets that have robotic surgeries, uh, probably they'll be able to get a better margin, especially around the urethra. Maybe some uh, patients can be spared, but not all. Okay. So this came when I was in the UK, this statement came in the ESMA news, and this was a big point of discussion. Really, is that the heading that is required to say that patients are spared from radiotherapy. Are patients really spared from radiotherapy or uh, patients do receive radiotherapy? That is what we are going to see now. So uh, as the previous speakers were speaking about locally recurrent uh, prostate cancer in a post prostatectomy setting, these were the key trials which were done in the pre-PSA setting uh, where adjuvant RT was shown to increase biochemical relapse-free survival and metastasis-free survival, which was significant. SWOG, URTC, and the German trials have shown that adjuvant RT definitely has a role in uh, post-prostatectomy setting. So the main uh, comment in the new uh, post-PSA monitoring era is that most of the patients here, uh, adjuvant radiotherapy who started or probably without any PSA monitoring. And most of the patients in the retrospect had raised uh, PSA levels or uh, persistent PSA rise even after surgery. So this is what the guidelines say. The NICE says, do not offer adjuvant radiotherapy routinely after prostatectomy. This was changed immediately after the radicals results, uh, radicals and artistic results came out. And uh, the ESMO also says, Following RP, patient should have the serum PGC level monitored. This, this term you should remember. This should be monitored with salvage after recommended availability of PSA failure. And NCCN gives us a whole lot of options, indications for salvage RT, indications for adjuvant RT. But here in this, you don't find uh, a, a, a single point there. So, what is the evidence? Can I ask? Uh, uh, Dr. Rupesh, what is the evidence behind these guidelines? Uh, in uh, the ESMO guideline, which uh, has been mentioned here, has been most probably taken from radicals trial, which was conducted fairly well. And uh, the PSA cutoff, everything was uh, defined. And that has shown that, clearly shown that uh, radical RT trial has clearly shown that uh, adjuvant RT doesn't improve uh, any kind of survival. Instead, it increases the toxicity. So I believe uh, salvage RT should be the um, uh, thing to do. Okay. Dr. Saro, any comment about the evidence that has been put up uh, to form the guidelines? No, I agree to that. I agree to what Rupesh has told. Okay. okay. So the evidence is basically from uh, the artistic collaboration group, which was a, a meta-analysis that was conducted along with the three trials, uh, along with the radicals trial and in combination of other two trials, which I'm going to show you ahead. And uh, the most important part of this evidence is it is a prospectively conducted systematic review and meta-analysis. And they used a harmonized definition of event-free survival. And uh, until the first, uh, so, and this has said, said that depending on, based on the 270 events, they showed no evidence that event-free survival was improved with advent radiotherapy compared with early salvage radiotherapy. So that is the reason uh, they have uh, recommended guidelines and policies should be reviewed to reflect this evidence. So the three trials that were uh, included in this meta-analysis were the radical RT, get to 17 and the rapes study. So as you can see, these are the high-risk features which 
uh, as Dr. Ravi Shankar has told previously, the high risk features which the trials have included inside the uh, study. And the trigger for early salvage radiotherapy, this is the most important point. Almost uh, all the trials have used 0.2 as a cutoff, to, as a trigger for early salvage radiotherapy. So, if you go back to the guidelines here, patients should have their serum PSA levels monitored. This is the point which needs to be taken home when we are following these guidelines. And even, so, if, even if margin is positive, we can still observe. Uh, yes, that is what the that is what the data analysis and other clients have told. Uh, T3, all the high risk features which we are seeing. So, uh, Dr. Uh, Sunil, what do you think uh, are other features which we need to look into in terms of high risk features? So, Sunil here. Uh, can you repeat the question? Yeah, I, I was just asking as you as you the slide, uh, these three trials are a pretty fair composition of high risk patients. Yeah, there is a yeah. glaring uh, thing that is visible pertaining to this case scenario, uh, which is underrepresented. See, they would have just mentioned the number of lymph nodes positive or negative. We may, we may need also consider like how many lymph nodes were as such positive or negative, how many were dissected, and was, was the tumor bulk involved, whether the tumor was involved in only one lobe or multi-lobal disease, all those things should be considered, I think so. Yeah, that's an excellent observation, Sunil. So, uh, pertaining to this case, especially why this case, this is a, this case is a good is a good case for discussion is that these trials, these three trials were underrepresented with the patients in whom uh, lymph nodes were involved. As you can see, radicals had only five percent or four percent of the patients. And they did not have any patients with uh, lymph node involvement, and only one percent of the patients in RAVES had lymph node involvement. So, as we have discussed, risk features uh, according to the radicals: one or more positive margins, PT3A, T3B, PT4, Gleason 7 to 10. So, does all these patients require RT? Dr. Ravi Shankar? No, no, not all. Yeah, yeah. That's what is proven in the trials. Yes. Sir. And uh, coming back to the case, this is a 75 year old diabetic male, post prostatectomy, PT2N1, and referred for radiotherapy three months after surgery. So, is, if we make an assumption, because all the case details are in the organizer, let us hope this patient has uh, a good five to 10 year life expectancy, and that's the reason he underwent surgery. Uh, so what are the other factors which, what are the other things which you need to see? What more information you want to see to advise this patient, Dr. Rupesh? Uh, maybe like uh, uh, how many lymph nodes dissected and uh, margins positive. Yes. And extracapsular extension if it is there in the lymph node. Mm-hmm. We might uh, check all those. Yes. What I feel is, even if it is N1, even though it, uh, N1 setting is underrepresented in uh, radical SRT trial, uh, in this case, the lymph nodes which are positive have been removed. So mm -hmm. if, if uh, PSA level post, post op pulse well uh, becomes less than 0.1, I would still observe. Okay, very good. Dr. Saurabh, any comment? What is the information do you require to advise this patient? I think uh, additional information would be like, uh, is there any extra capsular extension, seminal vesicle involvement, yep. neurovascular bundle involvement? These kind of additional factors could probably aid in, uh, again, deciding any further treatment. Okay. Dr. Ravi Shankar? Yeah, basically, we, we do consider those factors uh, which may contribute, uh, but definitely they are not going to uh, make your decision uh, on the either side by 
like your lymphovascular uh, invasion or all these things they may add on information but i don't think basing on that you should uh, stop giving or uh, start giving the radiation probably yeah. see the other problem is most of the trials uh, if you look at the inclusion criteria of uh, ge2 uh, yes. and uh, radicals or raves uh, many of them they have included uh, t3 t4 and what they have mentioned is nx that means in patients those patients uh, where you have not addressed your uh, address the lymph nodes uh, and n0 so in radicals patients where who did not undergo you know like uh, uh, evaluation of the lymph nodal status those patients probably would have got the positive like 4% or 5% that you are seeing but mm -hmm. in clinical scenario if you have a patient with the n1 disease really it is little difficult for you to decide whether basing on these data whether you want to give radiation or you want to wait for a, a psa to jump so that's a little uh, tricky exactly exactly that's a very valid point dr ravi shankar so uh, if you look at the inclusion criteria of radicals and uh, other two trials all the high risk features like t3 t4 margin positivity and uh, other features are also included but one thing as dr ravi shankar has mentioned the amount of nodal dissections or addressing the nodal disease was not clearly mentioned and as you can see it was only 5% or 4% of nodal positivity and how different is pn1 so dr navin can you comment what pn1 is Dr. Naveen, are you there? Okay. Dr. Sunil, are you there? I think it is N3 lymph node uh, something. Okay. It is the so, regional lymph nodes. Metastasis to regional lymph nodes. Regional, the regional lymph nodes. Metastasis to regional lymph nodes as such. But... the regional lymph nodes also it means to say that whether the lymph node is you know where is it actually located in the regional that's also i think so should be taken into consideration just as to say as a regional lymph node exactly and the size of the lymph node see the stages here in the prostate doesn't comment upon the size of the lymph node it just say positive or a negative that's it the, yeah. we have a you know a huge lymph node and we cannot say it as a n1 disease as uh, the bulk of the tumor the disease burden drastically shifts up that is exactly. to be that is to be considered before advising a patient whether we need to keep him under observation or to give a radiation the size of the lymph nodes are also to be considered very well before advising the patient exactly very nice uh, explanation sunil so uh, in prostate cancer unfortunately in hcc staging n1 as uh, dr sunil has said is it just mentions that metastasis to regional lymph nodes it doesn't say which group of lymph nodes it doesn't say it doesn't carry any significance of how much volume of disease is there and yes you can see n1 disease straight away goes into stage 4a so the implication for this is previously they, it was considered to be a kind of signal towards metastasis but the the thinking has been changing in terms of the number of positive nodes uh and uh, the volume of disease and the surgeons going uh, the surgeons going ahead and operating high risk cases and finding lymph nodes uh, in the post prostatectomy specimens so if you see the uh, natural history and clinical recurrence patterns of uh, lymph node positive disease as you can see there around 50% of them recur and and most of them are skeletal soft tissue and th this is a very heterogeneous population they behave very differently um, and if you can see pertaining to this case we need a lot of information uh, in the post operative histopathology report to take a decision regarding treatment so if you see the risk stratification by mochini uh, there are uh, this is a risk scoring system for cancer specific mortality prostate cancer specific mortality wherein it was highly highly correlating with the risk group that has been ascertained 
with the uh, points that are seen uh, the, the parameters that are taken in the post op histopathology it, depending upon the gleason score three or positive nodes positive margin and the presence or absence of radiotherapy this uh nomogram kind of thing was developed by shard you know developed on retrospective data so there are other nomograms to predict uh, like the mskc nomogram that uh, to predict uh, psa relapse or disease relapse uh, after prostatectomy in lymph node positive patients and this is another study from canada which is published in clinical oncology recently uh, which says that a significant association of persistently elevated post operative psa uh with uh, this uh, distant metastasis free survival was noted in this study and this should be taken into consideration like persistence of psa in the post operative setting is definitely is not a good marker to see so in the uh in this case scenario what we need is having this information the pre operative psa levels and the post operative psa levels and whole of the info, whole lot of information in the post operative histopathology specimen is required to take a decision rather than generalizing the statement that this patient might not require so i would go ahead and ask the panel what would you recommend in this patient given the information that i studied that i read out uh, dr ravichankar what would you would your recommendation change uh, uh, given the data that i presented here no what's the psa now exactly and dr manish would be knowing what's the psa <laughs> <laughs> so if the psa is more than 0.2 i am ready to start the patient on uh, um, okay so uh, you so uh, you you uh, say that if there is persistence of psa then definitely you are considering adjuvant yes, yes. therapy immediately uh, salvage okay. early salvage i would say early salvage oh, okay 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 dr rupesh Uh, i also uh, feel the same uh, okay. would, and this patient is 75 year old uh, yes. has undergone uh, prostatectomy plus lymph node which is a extensive surgery and uh, being prostate cancer uh, slow growing tumor we should not add up uh, radiation as one more modality i feel absolutely absolutely if mm. uh, psa is well uh, less than 0.1 or 0.2 i would also still observe i agree with dr very Rebecca. nice very nice dr saurav i would uh, probably be more inclined to treat the patient uh, and uh, yeah definitely i would be uh, vigilant about the um, psa rising uh, but uh, even with a marginal rise i would uh, pitch in uh, radiation i may not, might not wait for 0.2 nanogram rise okay good um so this is what i want in a panel discussion a divided panel not a consensus at this point so uh, these are uh, two uh, nice papers by abdullah uh, et al uh, which probably would make you think in in arriving at a consensus in treating this patient uh, one was published in 2014 and one was published in 2018 in in continuation with the paper that was published in 2014 it says that the beneficial impact of adjuvant radiotherapy on survival in patient p n1 patient highly influenced by tumor characteristics so in continuation with this paper they have published another paper in 2018 by dividing the patients into five risk groups so group 1 with a with a very less gleason score and group 2 gleason score of 7 to 10 with pt2 and pt3a and negative margins and group 3 with t3 t4 positive disease positive margins and group 4 is positive nodes less than 3 to 4 and group 5 is greater than 4 positive nodes as you can see from group 3 to group 5 there is significant impact of adjuvant radiotherapy or probably in combination with adt also uh, in terms of uh, eight year overall survival so it is all the combination of factors that uh, we need to uh, see in taking a decision uh, in this patients as you can see in this paper they say that men with low volume nodal lesion that is less than two pelvic lymph nodes in the presence of intermediate to high grade 
non specimen confined disease and those with intermediate volume nodule disease represent ideal candidates for adjuvant radiotherapy after surgery and this is another paper which was published in european neurology in 2018 which clearly show as you can see the overall survival curve with adt plus radiotherapy adt alone and um, uh, no treatment at all observation as you can see the overall survival is better uh, even after 15 years with uh, adjuvant adt and ebrt in nephrot positive prostate cancer but if you see uh, uh, if you see the overall survival here the adt arm and the observation arm are uh, meeting because the uh, so because of the side effects of adt but the adt and ebrt arm is still at the higher level but if you see cancer specific survival definitely adt and adt plus ebrt are better in lymph node positive patients after prostatectomy and again this also states that if, uh, this paper also states that it is a combination of factors not uh, especially in this case scenario with the t2 and disease it is a combination of factors rather than a single decision of going ahead and this is uh, another uh, a uh, publication that was presented in jco in 2021 uh, which is actually very good uh, which actually takes a rebuttal at the artistic meta analysis and the trials that have been presented uh, we they have evaluated the impact of adjuvant versus early salvage on all cause mortality as you can see all cause mortality in adverse pathology its definition has changed it includes positive pelvic nodes high gleason scores and disease extending beyond the prostate so if you see in this group or in this subset of patients definitely adjuvant radiotherapy should be considered uh, uh, because the all cause mortality is less and if you see the recommendations uh, from the australian group they as the nccn and the other recommend as the nccn recommendation observation rt to pelvic nodes duration of adt and everything they have given everything but level 1 evidence is only for either of the treatment options so can we arrive at a consensus in this case dr namin but ravi shankar see i, I would uh, rather wait because he is 75 year old man underwent surgery uh, if you look at this uh, g2 a4717 see what happens is in most of these patients that's the one uh, trial which had shown five year overall survival uh, in, in comparison between the adjuvant and salvage if you look at that 96% of uh, them had uh, edge, uh, like benefit uh, and 99% with in salvage group and the important aspect at that uh, level is 73% of these patients had you know late genito urinary adverse events so i don't want to trouble him at that age uh, mm. so i will rather wait because salvage group had only a 29% of uh, adverse exactly. events so that exactly. is very 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 important for a patient who is suffering from uh, prostate cancer especially because you should not make him suffer more with your uh, radiotherapy uh, being a radiation oncologist uh, i love to give rt but i'll wait for a right case okay yes. yeah dr rupesh yeah uh, uh, i think in a different way Uh, when radical rt has concluded that even though margin positivity is there uh, margin positivity itself doesn't need adjuvant radiation why mm. node positivity should be uh, taking radiation oh, uh, when post op radiation we will be treating normal bowel normal bladder yes uh, yes. Mm. yes 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 so yes. uh, treating blindly beating around the bush uh, i would avoid and uh, wait for the uh, No. that's a bold statement of rupesh in a radiation in a random conclave uh dr saurav yeah i would uh, probably wait for the psa i'll have a close watch on psa and in case there is any psa rise i would consider uh, radiation and dr sunil um at three months repeat a psa level once again as dr saurav said we will look into it but 
you know uh, what my thinking is like surgeon is keeping quiet for the last 3 months and why he has referred the case now there should be something which has made him to refer the case now. <laughs> that's so a very me. very 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 valid point because i am coming so, there i am coming there i am coming there <laughs> one more factor to investigate and then take a call i think so very one nice more- Yeah, wonderful 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 uh, this is uh, another indication surgeons indication yes yes i am coming there sir i am coming there that is one point which we need to consider dr vishweshwar uh, and uh, one more question i wanted to just ask the group like you know see positive margin doesn't always mean that even in a prostate cancer sometimes even up, uh, at the apex it is very difficult to operate even with robotics we see a lot of uh, positive margins positive margins yes but that doesn't necessarily uh, it is not like you know uh, oral cavity cancer or any other cancer this is a different yeah, this scenario is, yes yeah, yes it is like a uh, uh, active prostate which has been remaining it is you know the whole uh, prostate is at risk so it doesn't mean yes. necessarily that you are leaving behind t- tumor that is the reason why yes. a positive margin uh, is not a high risk even if i would have, i would yeah. agree with sir we would request the pathologist you know to mention whether the residual prost- uh, the gland which is there which is uh, you know margins positive means was that a yeah regular whether there's a tumor at the ink margin or the tumor at the ink one, margin doesn't necessarily yeah exactly exactly this is the point of contention in many discussion groups regarding the apex positive margin because most of the time it is the normal prostate gland that is left over unless if there is a very high volume of disease in the prostate because most of the prostates that are getting up op- that are that were operated uh, are uh, low risk prostate cancers and most of the times it would be the normal prostate that is left behind in the positive margin um, and we have to have a discussion with the pathologist there is a very valid point and uh, the, with all the with all the evidence that have uh, that i have pointed out uh as you can see this this is the evidence for pathologically positive prostate cancer as you can see there is a glaring thing here this is all retrospective there is no prospective study that will make a statement saying that uh this should be done so hence for now we have to take the consensus in the panel that we need to wait or we need to repeat or uh, as dr sunil dr. has pointed out why the surgeon has kept the Hello, dr. patient uh, yes yes sir can you please wrap up we are running short of time so yes i'm going to wrap it up so radiotherapy technique doses and volumes i'm sure everyone will agree with uh, the intensity modulated radiotherapy with image guidance and the dose the radical trial has shown two types of dose levels 64 to 66 and 52.5 to 55 and the volumes again uh, there is a contention and in this case i i'm sure all the panel will agree with the whole pelvic radiation and the prostatic bed radiation with a combination of adp so these are the two uh, uh, criticisms or uh, rebuttals what you say that to continue the debate upon the meta analysis and the three trials that have been uh, these are a very good read see what happens if uh, the properly presented evidence is not interpreted correctly so that take home is you need to assess the patient carefully we need to assess the risk factors we need to take a combined decision and we need to sit with the patient and provide him evidence and discuss all the uh, toxicities and the benefits and make sure that we arrive at a consensus decision in in consultation with the patient and we should be realistic about the results and toxicities and interpreting them in an individualized manner thank you